So basically, I need to follow factor this qu the like quadratic residue thing much. So uh, let's start by just doing the small cases, right? Because I have no idea what's going on. For p equals three. Uh, Q of x. What is it? It's like so two on three. Two is not a quadratic residue. And one is. So this is what it is for p equals three. There's no plus one, right? Uh, I think. X. Yeah, no problem. X squared minus one. Is that right? Minus one, minus one, plus one. I right, type with the first one. This is single minus one. Okay, and then six is yeah minus minus x to the five plus x four. This is so strange. I'm amazed that this is a doable problem in the sense that I would not expect there to be like anything you can say about this polynomial. But apparently, you can compute how many times x equals one divides it if this problem is correct. <laughs> All right, so in the situations when uh, minus one is not a quadratic residue, i.e. if p is three mod four, then I get this automatic symmetry, right? Across the something. Minus, minus, plus, minus, plus, plus. So this already like always has this minus x, x q minus one is automatically a factor. I wonder if I should actually write the intermediate steps differently. Like this was x, x minus one, x squared minus one. This one is x, x, q minus 1. And then once I factor out x cubed, x squared plus 1, maybe? No, that, that sounds wrong. Then no way, no way. Oh, man, factor. It's x. No, x two minus one isn't a factor at all. What am I, what am I doing? Um, yeah, they, it's. They're, they're quadratic residues, for sure. I can't factor. Ah, someone factor p equals seven for me. Uh, uh. See, it's symmetric around the. Oh, what the heck? Does it not factor more than that? Heck, what is that? Uh, well, that that does have an x plus one factor, so I'll pull it out. X squared plus x plus Wait, I'm confused. Ah, uh, uh. Wait, no. Sorry, that. Sorry, I lied. That doesn't have. I, is that just irreducible? Uh. No way, right? X squared plus. Uh, well, maybe it's irreducible. It's irreducible. Okay, is it irreducible mod seven? Yeah, that's the real quicker. Uh. Cool. What does it factor as? Oh yeah, x plus one is a factor actually. Mod seven. 
Uh, or x x minus one is. Oh, this is so strange. Right, 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 right. Because when I evaluate x minus one, x cubed plus 3x squared minus 3x minus 1. Thanks. If you take derivative, I do like the derivative idea actually. If we think this is going to have a lot of repeated roots, then differentiating it is not a bad way to deal with it. Um, and then I take it again and then I get... Okay. Great, that 4x plus 1 should be reducible because there's no linear roots. Amazing, okay. So, well, first of all, so much for the original idea I had, which was I thought maybe there's a chance this would actually just always factor as like, um, what's my call it? Yeah, I had this idea that maybe these things just always factor as, uh, like, powers of x to the n minus 1, which is too good to be true. <laughs> I'm just so confused that this is happening. Like, what is going on? Are we being scammed again? I don't remember. Yeah, P minus one halves would definitely, I think, be a very reasonable guess. So I agree there's always at least one factor of x minus 1. Um, I'm surprised that there's... E so even the fact that x minus 1 is a double root seems surprising to me. So I'm gonna just going to take a... Like, what happens when I take a derivative? It tells this... Then there's a statement that's happening, right? The statement... If the answer is at least 2 for large enough primes, then the statement is that... Um, 
sum of k times the Legendre symbol k on p is equal to zero if I sum from k equals one through p minus one. And this is in fact true for dumb reasons if k is, or if p is three mod four. Because if p is three mod four, um, then Hang on. What? Really? I mean, the identity is definitely true because the answer is greater than 2 for... We proved it in a green mob class. Oh man, why haven't I seen it? Uh... What? what how, how do you do this? Um... Yeah, actually, if I'm going to sum this way, it... I might as well take a primitive root, right? Like, let g be a primitive root. And uh, we're, we're summing over the non-zero residues. So this is like um, g to the e. Uh, sorry, let's do g to the n. And then like one if n is even, zero if it's odd. Wait, actually, I think I know, I see how you can do this. We're going to take a bunch of derivatives, okay? And But instead of... Hmm, if I differentiate and multiply by x, that like multiplication by x will preserve the number of roots. So, so here's the algorithm. Algorithm. Um, we're going to replace q by uh, x times the derivative of q until no more one roots. And the number of times you do this, you can do this, is equal to um, the, the multiplicity of x equals one root. I think that'll work. Or uh, this, this algorithm, sh okay. And if I do this algorithm a few times, then it's like I had right. So the previously it was the genre symbol k x x to the k. So this is q. And after n applications. K, K is just a dummy variable. It's like sum from K equals one to P minus one. So after N applications, um, what do you get? It's like, it's just K to the N, right? And put X equals one. So you had this, uh, frick. Yes, yes, on P, on P. <laughs> oh, that's a horrible typo. Uh, that makes so little sense, it hurts. Um, all right, cool. And then now I put in x equals one, right? So you get this thing and yeah, this, this is in poly material. I agree. So we want to see how many, for how many N is this identity true? And once it's, yeah, right. So you get the QRs and the non QRs. So this is equal to the sum across QRs of k to the n minus the sum of all, uh, twice the sum of all of them. This sum here is always zero. That, that's actually just a thing. Uh, equals zero, I'll, I'll, I'll say for p less strictly less, n strictly less than p minus one. We think the answer is p minus one halves, so we won't need to go that deep. Um, so, you know, now we're just summing that, uh, yeah, for k a quadratic residue. And that thing is a geometric series. 
um, it's uh, this the main the interesting sum is equals to the sum across a primitive root g of like g to the the exponents run from like the 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 the, the uh, yeah yeah same identity. I'll, I'll just write it explicitly. g to the 0 plus g to the 2n plus dot 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 plus g to the p minus 1 over 2 times n. <laughs> Did you guys not prove this identity? Shame on you. Uh, I, I'm surprised that was a deduction too, to be honest, though. I... But... Uh, I think you should at least say, like, because a primitive root or geometric series. Like, I think there's not an excuse to take, like, the extra 10 seconds to at least write the words, like, either the words primitive root or the words geometric series, so you're not just making stuff up. Uh, yeah, but anyways, there. Which is zero. Anyways, this is zero by geometric series if n is strictly less than half p minus 1, but it's non-zero. It's actually equal to... Yeah, we should get to the last problem. We went through this one quite quickly. Uh, yeah. If n equals half p minus one. All set. Did I not need the Jandra symbol? <laughs> Wait, that's a good point. <laughs> I threw away the Legendre symbol right away, but you actually can keep it around. Or, not throw away. I, I turned it into the Legendre symbol immediately, but... It's bait. Take the Legendre symbol. <laughs> 